I said I was gonna do this one before, so I'll get it out of the way. And I want to talk about it. This is the kind of movie that sits on the line of being a movie and an art piece. So it sits on the line of being good and not so good. Less so that the fam is bad in production as the whole package of the movie is fine. Jude Law is adventurer and title character Joe Sullivan, AKA Sky Captain. The best way to describe his character is protagonist. He is the Nathan Drake, the Indiana Jones, the rugged action hero. He is seconded by Gwyneth Paltrow as Polly Perkins, who is Lois Lane, the Elena Fisher, the plucky romantic lead. They both act well, but it's characters we've seen before from the start. We know how this is going to go. The same can be said for the other characters and actors like Angelina Jolie, Giovanni Ribsy, and Omid Jalili. They're all characters we've seen before. The story and characters are just too cliched. They're not very interesting. But that's not why the film was made or why the film still has the acclaim it still has. It's for the visuals. The visuals in this movie are amazing with a big chunk of it down to the fact that it's a big passion project for writer and director Carrie Connor. It was his first feature film and as he's a film intellectual in the geeky kind of way, he spent a lot of time trying to get the film off the ground his way. Now being as a film inspired by the filming techniques of the 1930s and 40s in the style of German expressionism and animation. It has a 50s sci-fi B-movie style like the original The Day the Earth Stood Still mixed with the old adventure serials and the golden era age comic books. It was one of the first movies to be entirely shot on blue screen meaning that the visuals can become the forefront of the movie. That also means that the characters can end up being more predictable and the story can end up being more predictable as the visuals are the important part of the movie. It's the big saving grace of the movie as the plot can be described at best as B-movie mad. In a techno advance 1939, scientists start going missing with a supervillain played by a Tarkin Lawrence Olivier being the cause. Polly Perkins teams up with Old Flame Captain and goes adventuring. Robots invade New York, techno babble, techno babble, follow the robots, techno babble, techno babble, do scenes with Joe Lee, adventuring adventure, and they arrive at Shangri La. The villain scheme is then shown and then swiftly defeated, and the film ends with a quip. There isn't really that much else to say around the story. It's ground that's been tread before in other movies and even games and even better. The new ground was the special effects and it did it well to the point where it was one of the groundbreakers in special effects technology of the early 2000s. What seemed most interesting about this film and why I wanted to talk about it was it seems like Conan has fallen into the Peter Molyneux trap, the Will Wright trap. His debut appearance ended up being a giant statue of gold that everything else that comes after it inevitably ends up in its shadow. It's rather sad as I would love to see him make another movie in this same visual style just with a better story. Since the movie came out movies like 300 has shown and how far the technology has come in recent years and pushed the grounds of the narrative that could be told with this kind of visual setup. Really would just be the case of having another crack at it with some time past. 